I've made this video to address some misunderstandings concerning batteries used in the sailing community, though this will obviously be relevant to anyone looking to install an energy storage solution. I'm specifically making this video as a result of watching a recent video by The Winds on their channel Gone with the Winds, where they did an excellent job of presenting the benefits of lithium-ion batteries, but underrepresented the cost-benefit of lead acid. And this is not to say that I disagree with their decision. In fact, for their boat and their lifestyle, I think they made the right call. But for the vast majority of us on the water today, I think lead acid are the way to go. And I'll attempt to show why by accurately presenting the costs of lead acid and lithium ion. And I'll go one further by presenting the numbers for Aquion batteries as well, since they have recently become a hot topic of discussion. I've had this video in the works for nearly a month now, but I fear my procrastination has already cost good people hard-earned money as Sailing Starlight recently purchased lithium ion, and I'm not convinced it was the best decision for them. Aquion batteries are a relative newcomer to the battery market, made of a manganese oxide cathode and a titanium phosphate anode. The electrolyte is sodium perchlorate, a common salt. Since it is free of the toxic substances normally found in batteries, it is the only battery which has received cradle to cradle certification, meaning that at no point in its life cycle from the very beginning of its manufacturing to the very end of its recycling, is it ever a threat to the environment? But potato batteries are non-toxic too. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are a good energy storage solution. Aquion batteries are further complicated by the fact that at the beginning of March, Aquion Energy filed for voluntary bankruptcy. But I'll cover them nonetheless for two reasons. They are currently still available from select online retailers, and if the technology is solid, then someone is sure to pick it up and restart production again. They wouldn't be the first company to arise from the ashes of bankruptcy. The numbers I'm using today come directly from the manufacturers. I've chosen Trojan and Relyon to represent their respective technologies because they both come highly recommended for quality and customer service. The Winds recommend Relyon lithium ion batteries and Andrew Evans, writer of Thoughts, Tips, Techniques, and Tactics for Single-Handed Sailing, recommends Trojan Lead Acid Batteries, which he uses on his Olsen 30, named Foolish Muse. Flooded Lead Acid Batteries are a decades-old technology, having reached their technological peak years ago. As such, they do require some very basic maintenance, which is really no harder than checking the engine oil, but for some owners it's an issue, so I'll grudgingly mention it. All one needs to do is open the caps, and if the cells have off-gassed some of the water, top it up. However, if your charger is adjusted properly for your specific batteries, there should not be a significant amount of off-gassing. On the right, you can see lead-acid batteries live longest when only discharged lightly, down to about 10%. But at the same time, this is a very inefficient use. Applications where you might use them this way, efficiency be damned, is in a computer UPS or uninterruptible power supply, where it is only required to cover for brief periods of instability in the power distribution grid, brownouts, spikes, saving your work and shutting down uh, during a blackout, or on a sailboat that is sailed for a couple hours a day during daylight but otherwise spends its life plugged in at the dock. To this list, I would add live aboard motor sailors, including catamarans, since the engines are turning often enough to basically make them equivalent to a grid tied system. On the other extreme, on the left, is a battery that is charged to 100% after every use, but fully discharged during every use. This is how my family used batteries in our camper every summer growing up. During the day, running radios, fans, pumps, at night, running the lights until they died. Then, waking up the next morning, starting the car, clipping the battery to the alternator and charging it full again for another day of use and abuse. Still, even abusing a battery in this way, you can see by looking at the left side of the chart that it should still last you several years of use. It's generally accepted that the greatest cost benefit for lead acid is achieved around 50% depth of discharge. But to see these benefits to your batteries, you must religiously avoid discharging deeper as killing your batteries even once will disproportionately push you to the left side of this graph, and killing them even three or four times will permanently and irreparably push you to the left side. Still, I'll reiterate that even abusing them like this, they should still last you several years. On a high quality, deep cycle battery, killing it is far from the instant death that it would be on a high amp automotive battery. 
The biggest concern concerning a lead acid battery is returning it back to 100% state of charge. This is critical to prevent sulfation, which will drastically reduce a lead acid battery's ability to take and deliver a charge. This can be difficult or even impossible with your solar wind installation, especially when undersized. If a battery is stored below 100% state of charge, then sulfation will build up on the plates and though this can be partially repaired with a maintenance cycle, which basically is just a charge cycle that includes periods of much higher voltage to knock the sulfate off the plates, it is never fully repairable. Furthermore, this type of maintenance cycle promotes grid corrosion on the plates, so it is also damaging to the overall health of the battery and should therefore be avoided. Of immediate urgency, however, is the fact that a maintenance cycle will cause off-gassing as a result of over-voltage condition, so it is vitally important to check and add water when necessary afterwards. And with something like Trojan's HydroLink water system, it really is not as difficult as people make it out to be. Over-volting a lithium ion, on the other hand, will destroy it. In fact, where you must return a lead acid to 100% state of charge to prevent sulfation, a lithium-ion battery performs best when held at about 90%. This is excellent for efficiency as batteries generally resist being charged to 100%. Though I couldn't find numbers, it's widely accepted that lead-acid batteries greatly suffer in terms of charging efficiency as a result of their needing to be charged to 100%. If anyone has these numbers, I'd love to see them down below in the comments. On the bottom end, lithium-ion batteries tolerate much lower depth of discharge as well with their greatest cost benefit down at around 20% state of charge. Aquion are even better, taking all states of charge from 100% down to dead without suffering any significant effects to lifespan. So, with lead acid obviously being the least technologically advanced, why are they still on the table? Cost. The first row here is the initial cost, which is shockingly high for lithium ion. Shockingly high. This is especially true for boat owners on a fixed income, and is the most often quoted reason for going with lead acid. But, simultaneously, it insinuates that though the initial cost is higher for lithium ion, the overall cost is actually lower. And this is not necessarily, or even generally, the case. We'll get to that in a bit. Also, a note about this graphic. The lead acid solution and the lithium ion solution are nominally 3 kilowatt hours where the Aquion is only two and a half, so the price to price comparison in this graphic begins to break down a little here. Back to the spreadsheet, the second and third rows are weight and volume, which only suggest ease of handling. I always cringe when I see people manhandling a 75 kilogram battery, that's 150 odd pounds, awkwardly into position on their boat. You slip a disc at the dock and your sailing adventure is over before it begins. Because of its size, the Aquion will be limited mostly to land-based installations or very specialized boat installations. For lithium-ion, if you look carefully, each lithium-ion battery comes equipped with a charge controller on the top, which adds to their efficiency and safety, but also adds to their bulk. So we'll give lead acid the win in both of these rows as well for the time being, with the caveat that more lead acid batteries will need to be installed to give us the same kilowatt hours. The fourth and fifth rows are the accepted depth of discharge for best cost benefit and the life expectancy when used in this way. With Aquion batteries, there is no need to stress the battery management, so a win here for them. And lithium ion with a lifespan over 10 years takes the win for this line. Note that the Aquion is a 48 volt battery and the Trojan is a 6 volt battery, so we won't be able to compare amp hours directly. Also. I'll take a moment now to mention that depending how your system is currently rigged, you may need to change out some equipment to 48 volt equipment, which will be an additional cost of installation for the Aquion battery. Though many large boats are already 48 volt standard, so you may not have to. These seven rows allow us to calculate the following four rows, the most important rows. Cost per kilowatt hour per year, weight per kilowatt hour, weight per kilowatt hour per year, and volume per kilowatt hour. Aquion is in fact the cheapest option per kilowatt hour, not including any necessary modifications to the hull or electrical system you have to make to make it happen. Interestingly, lead acid is actually still cheaper year over year than lithium ion. Not what you were expecting if you've been listening to the lithium ion zealots. To put it bluntly, 
at the end of the life cycle of that lithium ion battery, the person who went with lead acid still has nine Benjamins for every three kilowatt hours installed in their pocket to blow whatever way they wish. And should you have a catastrophic failure, for example, your charger fails and boils your batteries, or your boat takes a lightning strike, then instead of being out only eight Benjis, you're now out 35 Benjis if you went with lithium ion. I included weight per kilowatt hour per year so you can calculate the amount you need to budget for shipping. But for the vast majority of us who keep our boats at a major center like Vancouver or Toronto or New York or Galveston or Miami, etc., etc., where the vast, vast, vast majority of us keep our boats, this will simply not even be a consideration. Even if you are in the South Pacific, most countries use 6 volt lead acid batteries in their scooters and electric cars, so shipping should really never be a problem except maybe in the Caribbean. If you are in a location where shipping costs are a concern for you, then the Aquion rather than the lithium ion is in fact the cheapest battery in terms of weight per kilowatt hour per year. Weight per kilowatt hour will not be a huge concern on a boat. Weight is a concern for things like drones and perhaps racing boats, but for the rest of us, weight is just added stability when you put it in the right place. More or less ditto for volume per kilowatt hours. It's a concern for cellular phone makers and perhaps cruisers who have their boats filled to the gunnels with stores and gear. But for the vast majority of us, it's just not an issue. And lead acid will be completely satisfactory. Further, with the lithium ion batteries taking up nearly three times the volume individually, it's much more difficult to find discrete locations to tuck them. I will concede here that the WINS is a rather specialized installation, having 1200 amp hours of lithium ion, which enables them to run their air conditioning off of their solar. Very few of us have this requirement, and to do so with lead acid would be prohibitive. I've used four lead acid batteries per lithium ion in my calculations today to ensure apples to apples as much as possible, which would mean 16 lead acid batteries to roughly match the wind's power storage with their lithium ion. But in truth, Andrew Evans has raced the single-handed Transpac using only two of these lead acids, running all radios and steering gear with no outages, even with consecutive overcast lasting multiple days. Jamie and Liz of Follow the Boat use four lead acid batteries and charge all of their cameras, computers, drones, and if I recall, even music equipment. If you cruise around the world for five years and then decide to sell your boat for whatever reason, remember that no one cares that your lithium ions theoretically still have nearly six years left in them. It's lost value to you. Probably around $5,000 worth of lost value. And though lithium-ion will get cheaper in the coming years, with lithium-ion becoming more and more popular, it's very likely the price of lead acid will also continue to drop as legacy factories attempt to stay relevant in the modern battery market. Aquion batteries likewise shouldn't be immediately written off. For applications in remote locations where removal is prohibitive due to these batteries' non-toxic nature, it may be possible to get permission to dispose of these batteries on site which would certainly add significant value to the cost-benefit analysis. Further, especially because of their environmentally friendly image, anyone who needs to market themselves as environmentally conscious, charities like Sea Shepherd or EcoSwiss Sailing Expeditions, who market their environmentally conscious image to win charitable donations, especially as these types of outfits usually use bigger boats, which would more easily accommodate the bulky nature of these large batteries, or businesses like a caddy diamond mine, which must continually present an environmentally conscious image to be allowed to continue operation in an environmentally sensitive area. These batteries could certainly be used to bolster that image. So in summary, if you're building an off-grid solution for your cabin, I'd snap up the remaining Aquion batteries on the market as they are in fact the cheapest per kilowatt hour per year and the lightest per kilowatt hour per year to ship. If you are the average boater whose boat lives in a marina or at anchor but turns engines a couple times a week, or have a boat on a mooring ball that you use only a few times a month with a small solar panel charging it back up to 100% saturation, in any application where you can bring those batteries back to 100% state of charge, go lead acid. But if you are cruising in the tropics and find you are unable to live or more importantly sleep without air conditioning, 
then you will either have to find a home for 16 little lead acid batteries or drop those Benjamins and upgrade to lithium ion. Thanks for watching. Take care.